Steam Series, championed by your Southern California Toyota dealers. I want to keep playing little Peggy Lee. All right, <laughs> yeah. in this week's Steam Series, our focus today is science, technology, and math. And our meteorologist, Danielle Gers, joins us live from home with a story of a bee biologist. Danielle, I am so inquisitive about this story. <laughs> it is a very sweet story. Uh, get ready to meet someone who is both a protector and a collector of an insect that is critical to both our food supply and our flower supply. Whether it's iridescent and blue, chubby and striped, or tiny and swaddled in a California poppy, Dr. Lauren Canicio just can't get enough of them bees. Her view of these buzzing winged pollinators, pure affection. You can actually just kind of snuggle them and pick them up, um, <laughs> which I've definitely done. Lauren is a professor of entomology at UC Riverside. The focus of her research? I study bee communities. What's the attraction? Bees pollinate a third of our crops basically in terms of like the calories we eat. They are also keeping all of our wild plant communities alive. If you go outside to any garden, chances are you've seen bees that look like this, European honeybees. What you've likely never seen are bees that look like this, this, or this. All that yellow stuff is actually pollen. We have about 1,500, maybe more species in California alone. Yet the majority of bees native to our state are almost never seen near the places we live. They are definitely in peril. Lauren has traversed remote areas of California to catch and catalog bees of all different stripes. And no stripes at all. This is a wool carter bee. They like to collect fuzzy things. And if you ever have like a fuzzy plant in your yard, they'll be pulling the fuzz off the leaves of the plant. They actually line their nests in it. By cataloging native bees, Lauren hopes to protect bee diversity. Different bees will visit different types of flowers. And the very best pollinators of native flowers and crops, native bees. For example, sunflower or blueberry, all of those are from the Americas. And because they're the European honeybee, I mean, they, they give it their best in terms of pollination. But a bumblebee, for example, is a much better pollinator for blueberry or for cranberry than the honeybees are. Of all the STEAM disciplines, bee biology relies most on science, math, and technology. Building little sensors to put in bee colonies. You kind of need to have all those pieces. Her interest in pollinators started in childhood. I just grew up with this feeling that like, you know, bees and humans, we were just really intricately related. You know, I do, I enjoy humans. I also have a lot of empathy for the natural world and I really wanted to protect those other species. Lauren says she and her team can't do it all. So she hopes more young people will join the effort to protect our plants by protecting our pollinators. As for the fear factor, I am zero afraid of bee stings. I've caught probably 100,000 bees and I've been stung maybe once or twice. Okay, disclaimer, if you are allergic to bee stings, uh, bee biology is not for you, but Lauren does say the vast majority of bees only sting when they're threatened, uh, although bee stings are a hazard in her field. For more on STEAM careers, go to cbsla.com slash STEAM. <laughs>